focused on you. Right now at four, new information about a police standoff in St. Charles County that ended with the death of a man. Police now say he was a suspect wanted in connection with a homicide in Forestell. Thanks for being here at four. I'm Kay Quinn. Brent Solomon is on assignment. It all started when St. Charles County Police discovered a woman's body in a tractor trailer in Forestell. The suspect, now identified as Clyde Young of Godfrey, was located hours later at a gas station in West Alton. Five on your side, Diamond Palmer is there. Diamond, you have new information for us. Well, Kay, just this afternoon, St. Charles County prosecutors issued charges in the deadly forest elf shooting. Investigators say the man who died here killed a woman hours earlier. Police say that man then began driving east, called 911 dispatchers and agreed to meet with them here. Now, but when police got here to the Phillips 6 66 gas station in West Alton just before 8 a.m. this morning. They say he became agitated, no longer wanted to talk and threatened to hurt himself. Police say they were trying to speak with him about a homicide investigation in Forestell. They say a woman was found dead in the cab of a semi truck near a service road. Investigators say the suspect and the victim got into an argument last night and he shot her in the head. Police say during the standoff, the suspect warned them he was armed with a weapon and just minutes before 11 a.m. several shots were fired. At this time, investigators say it's unclear if the man shot himself or if he was shot by an officer. He was coming to meet us and it, it, the Phillips 66 is basically as far as he decided to go. Um, he had initially said that he was going to turn himself into the Madison County Sheriff's Department. Um, and I'm not sure if he was either in route there or if he was already in that area. But then our investigators and in talking to him, he said, well, I'll come to you. Now, multiple police agencies responded to this incident here at the Phillips 66, including St. Louis County SWAT, Missouri State Highway Patrol and Alton and West Alton Police. Again, police do tell us this remains an active investigation. Reporting live here in West Alton, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. All right, thank you, Diamond. Now to the tragic fire that killed a mother and her four children in Ferguson. Investigators say it was a murder-suicide. Investigators determined Bernadine Prusner intentionally set a mattress on fire Monday and left a note behind. She, along with two-year-old Millie, six-year-old Jackson, and nine-year-old Ellie and Ivy, twins, died. Today, Five on Your Side spoke with Prusner's attorney, who shared a statement on behalf of her parents. For her to seek help would have been out of character because she was the person helping people. This is um, a, a horrific loss for everybody involved, for the dads, for the grandparents. Five on Your Side's Justina Coronel is covering this story. Look for her reports tonight on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. A St. Louis teen shot on Valentine's Day has died. 18-year-old Justin Moore died Friday after he was shot at a home on Ferris Avenue. Court documents say Moore and 18-year-old Timothy Lewis were smoking pot and handling guns. Lewis's gun went off and hit Moore in the head. Lewis has been charged with assault and armed criminal action. The woman who died in a hit and run in North St. Louis County has been identified. Police say Maria Moore was crossing Halls Ferry Road Tuesday night when she was hit by a car. She died at a hospital. The driver, Alexandria Coleman, took off but later returned. She's now charged with leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death and driving while on a revoked or suspended license. This is the fourth pedestrian hit and killed in St. Louis County just this month. Right now, a Chesterfield man is recovering after his home caught fire overnight. The fire sparked just before two this morning on Church Road near Strecker Road. The Monarch Fire Marshal tells us the victim was taken to a hospital for smoke inhalation. The home suffered significant damage. A cause is still under investigation. Well, a nice mix of sun and clouds today and once again, mm -hmm. unseasonably warm for February. No complaints here. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us with the weather first forecast. Yeah, we're staying well above freezing once again. We did have some scattered showers and thunderstorms develop east and southeast of St. Louis. 
through the course of the day, but during the day, the metro area has remained pretty much on the dry side with just waves of thicker cloud cover drifting through as that cold front has now pressed on to the south of St. Louis. We still have some clouds to get through this evening. In fact, a few sprinkles still well to the north of St. Louis. That's a lookout in St. Charles right now. Here is your weather first Doppler radar. The thing that stands out, all that lightning down to our south. Yes, it's been rather noisy here with these stronger thunderstorms going across parts of Reynolds, Iron, Southern Madison County. Now the severe thunderstorms are in that area approaching Cape Girardeau. So they're well to the south of us and out of the five on your side area. There are a few lighter showers and spritzes coming in towards Cyrene and Eolia right now and heading into northern portions of Calhoun County to the north of St. Louis. Otherwise, it's pretty quiet around the area. Temperatures remaining in the 60s right now will drop into the 50s this evening, Kay. All right, thank you, Scott. Right now, cell phone service on multiple networks nationwide has been restored, but tens of thousands of customers coast to coast woke up to find error messages, meaning no calls, no texts, no ability to dial 911. Laura Aguirre reports on the search for why it all happened. Downdetector.com was a popular website across the country Thursday as it monitored a widespread national outage impacting a number of wireless carriers, with the most occurring on AT&T's network. Some users report waking up to SOS messages. Others had no connection at all, no ability to make calls, send or receive texts, and in several southeastern states on the AT&T network, 911 service was temporarily unavailable over the past two days. The company telling CNN it was working urgently throughout the day to restore service to its customers, encouraging them to use Wi-Fi calling until then. The highest number of AT&T outages were reported across the Midwest, Southeast, and in Texas, according to downdetector.com. Customers also reported some outages on other major carriers like T-Mobile and Verizon. Although T-Mobile tells CNN they did not experience an outage and are operating normally, but at one point Thursday morning, downdetector.com showed just under 2,000 outages reported on T-Mobile's network. Verizon also said it was operating normally after peaking at just over 4,000 outages in the morning. As for the why it happened, a wireless industry source says for now, there's no indication that it was a cyber attack or other malicious activity. Public safety experts say wireless network outages often occur for mundane reasons, like construction-related digging or software issues. I'm Laura Aguirre for Five on Your Side. They are two of our favorite places to visit during the warm weather months. The popular St. Louis attractions now hiring. Ready to see some spring football where caw is the law? When you can score single game tickets to the St. Louis Battlehawks. February weather is usually cold and snowy, and that was definitely the case on Mardi Gras weekend 2003. We take you back in time on our vintage KSDK.